Welcome back to Grounded in Faith, where we ground ourselves in our faith so that we can live it out in the world around us. Today, I'm excited to speak with Janine Quigley. Janine, it's great to have you on. Thanks, Father. I appreciate yeah. it. No, so I'm excited to talk about how you have grounded yourself in your faith throughout your life. And then especially now, as you're so busy at your own parish, St. Michael's in Cherville, with all the different things you do and how you live that out in the world. So, yeah. Well, I'll start with a little bit who I am. Um, my name's Janine, and I've been a longtime parishioner at St. Michael's since childhood. So okay. I went to school there. Oh, did you? I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. Okay. I taught there for 11 years, elementary. Um, I still go back a little bit here and there to sub, so it's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I've always wanted to, I've always had a part of, St. Michael's is just a big part of me. Mm -hmm. So that's part of my story, I guess, today <laughs> to share. I think that's really neat because so often our faith isn't lived out in, by individuals, right? Like we don't live our faith out just me, right? They're, by definition, it, we need that community, right? That we live it out in a community. So it's really cool that you've really lived your whole faith life out in one parish and like with one community. That's really a, a cool thing that most people don't get today. I, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's fun to see my classmates from grade school come to visit their parents. They're like, oh, Janine, you know, it's kind of fun. You're still here. I'm still here. <laughs> no, well, so, we've had reunions oh, yeah. and so, you know, just things like that over the years. And I also got married there, so I am married oh, to no. Mike. <laughs> to my, yeah, Mike, great guy. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so I know, because I saw so I was at St. Michael's as a deacon, and actually the first year I was in seminary, so I, I have uh, some connection to St. Michael's. Sure. And I remember, so this was like, what, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, when I first got, my first time, I spent a summer at St. Michael's, and um, you were doing Radiate, which is the high school youth ministry, and that's really where I got to know you a little bit. You want, like, that, what are some of the things you're yeah, doing with them? Yeah, we, well, this is our 10th year of oh my Radiate. Gosh. We started it. Um, and that's been an awesome blessing. I did not want to do it, but <laughs> um, it has been an amazing, amazing experience. And so, you know, when you work with the teenagers or kids in general, you know, you, you tend to find that there's so much hope because mm -hmm. sometimes we get caught up as adults in the other stuff in the world. Yeah. And when you have, you know, minds that are ready to learn or just talk or share their faith, it's really kind of a neat um, experience to have that and see their faith. And you can kind of live through that in a way of just, okay, you know what? There is hope. There is hope. Yeah. So it's a really good feeling. I think it hits on so often. I think if anybody's ever done any sort of service or anything, they go in like, I'm going to go and do something for another person. And then you walk away realizing that you've got so much more out of them what you gave. And I think for you're sure. kind of hitting on that right there with hope for sure. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. I think it's it's interesting. And so it brings up because you talked about how, like you never wanted to do it. And it it gives this unique position within our faith journeys because so often that's so that's so often the case with what we do. And like this idea that we have to discern God's will. Like what is God asking of me? Because sometimes when we hear the word discernment, especially as Catholics, we think about like religious vocations to priesthood or to religious life, right? Like, oh, I'm going to discern or I'm going to discern marriage. But really there's something about like we have to discern every day, like what is God asking me today in small ways and big ways? And that's kind of your story, isn't that it? That is my story and and I hope that I could inspire someone as we share. Um, I, after teaching, I retired after only 11 years, which is quite, you know, not long, <laughs> quite <laughs> short, but I just knew something inside. I just, I don't want to get into that part, but just mm -hmm. the stress of it all was not healthy for me at the time. Okay. But I love kids. I love working with kids. And I knew someday I still will be. I didn't know to what capacity. Yeah. But that last year when I was teaching, nobody knew. But I was quietly praying every day, okay, God, if I'm supposed to be here, I'm, I'll be here and you'll give me the strength to do that. Or if I'm supposed to um, do something else, I'll know. Mm -hmm. So as time went on, I didn't even tell my husband, did not even tell Mike yet. He kind of knew maybe that was a possibility, but I never told him the what I was doing every day. Yeah. Of prayer. Really putting your trust in the Lord in those moments, saying like. I did. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I kind of like say, okay, God, you got to tell me. I kind of demanded it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but anyway, what happened was after I retired, I really wanted to stay involved in the church. I didn't know what it is that I wanted to do mm -hmm. because, you know, when you pick teaching or you pick, you know, choose a Catholic school, that is a ministry. Yeah. And you're so, not in for the big bucks. That's no, for sure. Yeah. No, it is a ministry. And so what happened one day at mass, uh, 
Father Brian Chadwick came and he had an announcement for us. And he said, if you're interested in Life in the Spirit seminar, come and check it out at the back table mm -hmm. after church. And I was like, hmm. So I, I went, I was like, that was kind of intriguing. I felt a little stir inside of me because so I was seeking. What I was, was the looking. Life in the Spirit? So what is that seminar? The Life in the Spirit Seminar is a very charismatic Catholic group, and I didn't know what it was at the okay. time until I actually experienced it myself. Oh, so you really didn't know when you went and talked with the people at the table no, like what it was? No, I had yeah. no idea. So okay. we would meet once a week, and people in the diocese would meet, and we'd have, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 people meet. Oh, wow. with, it okay. was really, um, I believe we met at St. Bridget's, if I'm not mistaken, in Hobart mm -hmm. at the time. But it was a really wonderful experience because it helped me open up to what the Holy Spirit is, who the Holy Spirit is, how the Holy Spirit works in our life. And I always knew that, but it was so, so much more active. And um, that really opened the door to many other things that have, that have allowed me to listen and hear those promptings and take action. So it really opened you up to the Holy Spirit it to be did. able to hear, well, okay, what is the Spirit leading me to? It, what is God asking of me? It did, yes. Yeah. Are you so, still involved with that life in the spirit? I don't think any group that I know oh. of meets around here. Okay, so, so it really doesn't... it kind of like dissipated. You know, I did that for a year or two. It kind of dissipated, and then now okay. I don't know of any other. So it's a part area. of your story in it, the sense of it yeah. got you off to a direction that brought you to where you are now. It is. <laughs> and so, um, what I found is, you know, in in my particular uh, life, it's been a slow progression to want to learn more. Um, I do love to learn about all kinds of things. Health is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I do enjoy expanding. And, and I think that's what I learned most is when you open yourself up to the Holy Spirit, um, there's so much that could be learned. For example, we go to a job and we listen to podcasts or we ask the people that we know that have a lot of experience or mm -hmm. we want to learn, say how to cook. Well, you go and learn on a YouTube video or you ask your grandma or you <laughs> ask your mom or your dad, mm -hmm. you know, you find out, you seek. And, um, that's what I found is that you seek and, you know, Matthew seven, seven is my favorite verse. And, you know, you knock, the door will be open, you seek and you will find and you will get an answer. And I mm -hmm. believe that and so anyway, that's kind of how I kind of approached it all through. But I felt that learning more about the Holy Spirit really allowed me to expand that idea of um, learning and wanting more. Yeah. And so sometimes we pay a lot of attention to doing what we think we should do. But our life, our spirituality is so much a part of us that I encourage people to continue and expand and grow in that. What do you do? You read books, you listen to podcasts, you can ask people that you trust, you know, about their faith life. Um, so I just think that's a huge part of it and we can't disconnect that from our everyday life. Yeah, and so often people, we do that, right? Like, oh, we have our job, we do PR, you know, continuing development for our jobs, for whatever it is, we, you know, we're interested in cooking, like you said. But then for some reason, our spiritual life is just kind of on the back burner in the sense of the educational side, like learning more about who Christ is, what the church says, like all those things. And it's like, yeah, it's great we go to mass on Sunday or we go to church, right, and do these things. But it's like, well, we need to continue, like you're saying, like on our own to continue that learning about who he is. And I think, too, maybe just being involved with Radiate or high school youth ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the past 10 years and learning about teenagers and learning about the process from, you know, first through eighth grade, you get Catholic educated. Not everybody gets a chance, but you go to faith formation class and it's often like, it just kind of drops off. I don't know, but that's kind of my feel. And mm -hmm. it's like, why would we ever stop? We never stop learning about technology in eighth grade. We're going to continue on. We never stop learning about you know, making friends, you know, we're not going to stop at eighth grade. We're going to continue on. And so why wouldn't we want to continue on in high school and so on? So, yeah. And that's what I think is really neat about what you do with Radiate with the high school youth ministries, because you're helping, I think, sometimes the kids recognize that their faith isn't tied to being in Catholic school. Because so often sitting on the other side of the confessional, right, when hearing confession, sometimes people come in and they're in their 50s or whatever and say, yeah, Father, last time I was at confession was when I was in eighth grade at Catholic school because it's, like, so intimately tied to our Catholic education that it doesn't help, like, so the, almost like you need to walk with kids as they expand that and realize, like, no, this is not just here but for our life, so. And 
I, this is kind of a neat thing to kind of look at your faith is, you know, we learn in kindergarten, first grade phonics of how to read. Mm -hmm. You know, we learn the sounds of the letters. And so you, you bring that into learning to read, sounding out a word, but then you also read to read a novel, to study, to continue on your education. So yeah. it's kind of like a, you know, comparing that. You want to have the steps of learning in your childhood from your parents, your main teachers, um, you know, going to mass and doing the different sacraments. And then you have that, you learn those steps, and then hopefully, you know, when you have the Holy Spirit come into you and ask, then hopefully you can continue on. And yeah. you know. that was very teacher esque. I love it. it. Was, you can definitely yeah. tell the teacher, you know, which is so much fun. And still, what you're talking is that groundwork we need, right? We all need that groundwork yes. so we can continue Absolutely. that on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. If maybe, you know, somebody who's listening to this thinking like, man, I think the Holy Spirit, I think God wants me to do, like, what is that next step in my life? Kind of what you were saying when you were finishing up teaching, you're looking to retire from that career path and like, okay, I still want to be involved in church, but I don't know what it is. What would you, like, what would you tell that person? Like, what is a first step that you think everybody should be taking if they're really in that place in their life? I think um, I would just really... Just say a quiet prayer. You know, start with something very small. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be, you know, an hour of meditation. Sometimes people can do that, but most people probably can't. Um, but, you know, just start off on a daily thing to say, you know, what is it that you want from me, God? Mm -hmm. What Today is yours. What do you want from me? And I think if you're open and you listen and you do have moments of quiet time that you can hear, yeah, I think you'll you'll hear. God's not gonna God's not gonna not let you know yeah. what He wants from he's you. He's gonna answer if the prayer. Ask. Yeah, and that's the thing. God doesn't you know He's not gonna push Himself on you. You have to ask. Yeah, like you said in your the scripture verse, right? You have to open the door, knock, and the door will be open. But we have to be the ones knocking, saying, "Lord, yeah, what are you asking?" Because we have to allow Him into our lives. That's right. So, no, that's really good. I think it's that surrender, like what you're talking about. Like, okay, Lord, what is your will for me today, each and every day? Well, thank you so much, Janine. Yeah. And if uh, you found this episode helpful, make sure you like, subscribe, share. Maybe you know somebody in your life or maybe yourself that's, you know, at that point where they're asking, what is the next step for me in my spiritual life? Maybe send this video to them and let Janine's story really resonate with them in a way. Make sure we ground ourselves in our faith so that way we can live it out in the world around us. God bless. Mm -hmm.